Hiya, I'm Sarah and I'm 21 and I'm just going to be talking a little bit about my journey with hip dysplasia and how I got diagnosed and how I've coped since. I actually got treated for hip dysplasia when I was younger and I got discharged when I was seven and ever since I was younger I always wanted to do dance class but I had to wait to be discharged before I could sign up so it's basically the first thing we done when I got discharged from the service was went and signed up for dance classes and I danced ever since basically I danced right through high school I went to college to do performing arts because I love dancing I went to uni to do musical theatre because dancing's all I've ever wanted to do I've always wanted to be a performer I've always had that natural bubbly energy um, and then obviously with that, pain's part of being a dancer and I had like constant hip pain growing up and I kept going to the doctors and they're like, oh, you're just putting your body under too much stress, like knock back the classes a little bit. So I did that and then I went to uni and I was dancing at uni five days a week. I was at the gym five or six days a week, sometimes seven on show weeks. So obviously naturally my body was tired anyway and pain's part of the profession, I guess. But during the lockdown in 2020, I actually noticed my foot started turning in more and more when I was walking. So I thought that I'd self-refer myself to physio, try and get it sorted before classes went back because I didn't want it to like impact my education or anything. And I got a phone call from the physio, they did the telephone assessment and decided it would be best to send me for an x-ray given that I'd already had this condition before. And at the x-ray it actually showed that I had some healed and unhealed hairline fractures on both hips that they couldn't find a cause for them being there. So I had to get sent for like an MRI scan and stuff. And at the MRI, it got confirmed that I did have bilateral hip dysplasia and I had scoliosis as well in my back. So from that, I got sent to a specialist in Hexham who specialises in young hip preservation and he just sent me for a CT scan and a steroid injection just to confirm the diagnosis and figure out the best like way of treatment, the best way I move forward. So the CT scan did in fact conclude that I had hip dysplasia and my right side was definitely worse and I also have a femoral version as well. So I'm going in and I'll be getting a PAO surgery and I'll also be getting a femoral osteotomy on the back of that as well at the same time. Um, which basically means they're going to break my femur as well as my hip which is absolutely fine I mean if it means I'm back on my feet then I don't mind but naturally this meant dancing was off the table for a little bit which is something I really struggled with because dancing has been such a big part of my life for so long um, but hopefully after the surgery we'll be back to that and I'm actually due to get my surgery on the 1st of July so that is very very soon it has been a lot to cope with and I won't lie, I won't say it's all been easy. I've had really bad days but then I've had really good days and I've had the best support system around me that you could possibly have. Like my family, my friends, some of my uni lecturers, like they've all been so amazing through the whole thing and make sure that I could still go back to uni and do what I love to do. So I still went back, I've finished my degree, I've got a musical theatre degree now, I've got a BA honours. I actually choreographed a sat down dance for one of my final modules so that I could still show my dancing ability without injuring myself any further and now I'm just seeing where life takes me but having the support system I've had has been one of the biggest things that have been getting me through it. Also finding things you enjoy so I really enjoy listening to music, singing in the shower, colouring in, reading, it's just finding things to occupy your mind so you're not constantly sat worrying and you're not constantly sat dreading the next phone call from the doctor because I did go th through a phase of like not wanting to go to my appointments like I knew they were important but like I didn't want to go because every time I went I left feeling even worse and feeling like my career was even further away than I could ever have imagined which is quite difficult to deal with especially when you are at uni and other people are going on and doing their careers and getting auditions and getting jobs and it feels like your life's on pause but I just found other things I enjoyed, like singing. I've loved singing. I'm not the best singer, 
but I enjoy it so I'll sit in my room sometimes and I'll just have my Alexa on and I'll start singing and it'll be great so it's just about finding things to just occupy your time and occupy your mind don't sit and dwell and if you do feel really down about it and you do feel a bit lost and a bit like helpless I guess talk to someone like my best friends have been an absolute godsend through the entire thing because I'm one of them people I bottle things up until I start crying um, so I went through a couple of months where I wouldn't talk about what was wrong with me I wouldn't speak to anyone about it I'd act like I was fine I was hobbling around on my crutches and I was sitting in and watching a dance class one day and I just started crying so my best friend took me out we had a little pep talk and then I was fine so it's just making sure you have the supportive people around you making sure you have something to occupy your mind something you enjoy it could be like anything colouring in reading binge watching Netflix listening to music having a sing song in the shower going on drives with your friends whatever it is just make sure you do it like don't let anything keep you down because it does make the whole process a whole lot harder to deal with um so yeah that's how i've got through that part obviously i've not had my surgery yet it's in in a couple of weeks time and hopefully hopefully these methods keep me and help me get through the recovery because it is quite a long recovery it's quite hard but i'm just ready for it really i'm just ready to start recovery start getting better start working hard towards building a career and just getting back to living my life really.